Okay, this video is going to be about Simpson's rule from calculus, which is a way to approximate definite integrals. So I've jotted down Simpson's rule, um, if you've never seen it before. But there's these alternating coefficients in the formula, the 4, 2, 4, 2. And the, the first and last term have a coefficient of 1, but otherwise you see these, these alternating patterns. And I just want to talk about deriving the formula. So it's going to take a couple minutes. You know, deriving the formula is much harder you know, than just showing how to use it. I definitely have videos on how to use it. But let's talk about it here. So, so again, you're trying to approximate a definite integral. So from A to V. Now, the way that you typically start off in calculus approximating it is you use rectangles. You either use left endpoints or right endpoints. So maybe I'll use some left endpoints here. Okay, so um, you know you add up the areas of the rectangles. So there's also the trapezoid rule, which is uh, instead of using rectangles, you just take the endpoints and use straight line segments. That's another way to do it. Simpson's rule does something that's slightly different. And what Simpson's rule does is it uses parabolas. So, okay, so in my case, I've used the n value of 6. So n has to be even when you use Simpson's rule. So I've got the points x sub 0, x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4, x sub 5, x sub 6. So again, from x sub 0 to x sub 1, that would be the width uh, delta x, and we're going to label that as h in this, as, we, as we go through this. So the parabola, you know, so I'm taking three successive points, x sub 0, x sub 1, x sub 2. I'm looking at the corresponding y values on the curve. So this will be my curve that we're trying to approximate. So the point p sub 0, that's going to be a point on the curve. p sub 1 is going to be a point on the curve. p sub 2 is going to be a point on the curve, etc. The parabola is going to go through those three successive points. And again, we're going to come up with a formula for that parabola so that we can calculate the area underneath the curve. That's the idea. So the parabolas are going to change. You know, so p sub 0, p sub 1, p sub 2, you'll have a, a parabola. Through the points p sub 2, p sub 3, p sub 4, you're going to have a different parabola. Um, I could try to draw the parabola through p sub 4, p sub 5, p sub 6. Again, it doesn't look like a great parabola, but that's the idea. Okay, so, so we have to come up with formulas for those parabolas. So one little trick that we're going to do just to make the computations easier, it doesn't matter how you shift. It doesn't matter if you shift this curve, right? The area underneath of it is still going to be the same. So I'm going to shift my parabola so that it is symmetric about the y-axis. Okay, so again, this is the width delta x. We've got another delta x, or so correspondingly, the way I'm labeling it is, we've got a width of h and another width of h. So if we make that symmetric about the y-axis, well, it'll go... I should put delta x over, yeah, okay, so delta x equals h. So if, if we make it symmetric about the y-axis, well, it'll go from negative h to positive h. Well, we know that parabolas are of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Well, let's just compute the area generically um, underneath the parabola. Okay, so I'm just looking at the first one, two, three points. Well, we're integrating from negative h to positive h. And again, the parabola has the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, you could just immediately start calculating antiderivatives, substitute in negative h, positive h, and get your solution. A lot of books, you'll see them make an observation, and we might as well point it out here. I'm going to write this as ax squared plus c dx plus the integral from negative h to positive h of bx dx. And the idea is the function y equals bx is an odd function. It's symmetric about the origin. Right, so if you have something symmetric about the origin, if you integrate over a symmetric interval, 
right? Remember, in this case, if you integrate about a symmetric interval from negative h to positive h, that's simply going to give you a value of 0. Okay, so we're going to just use that observation. ax squared plus c, that's going to be an even function. And since it's even, we can just multiply it by 2 and integrate from 0 to h. We've got ax squared plus c dx. And now let's just go ahead and integrate. Again, you don't have to make these observations at all. Just, you know, some things to jog your memory and, and uh, make life a little easier. So if we compute the antiderivative, we'll have a times x to the third over 3 plus c times x. Again, a and c are just our, our constants from 0 to h. And now if we substitute in, we'll have 2 times, well, we'll have a times h to the third over 3 plus c times h when we replace x with h. And notice when we substitute in x equals 0, we'll just get 0 plus 0. So we're left with 2 times a h to the third over 3 plus 2 times c times h. Okay, so that's going to be the area underneath that, that's going to be the area underneath that parabola. All right, well let's make another observation here. So, so okay, let's compute, let's find formulas for y sub 0, y sub 1, and y sub 2. Well, to get the value for y sub 0, what are we doing? We're substituting in negative h into this formula. So we'll, in that case, we'll have a times negative h squared plus b times negative h plus c. And that'll simp simplify to a times h squared minus bh plus c. To get the value y sub 1, well, now we're substituting in x equals 0. So, well, we would have a times 0 squared plus b times 0 plus c. And that's just going to give us c. Likewise, the value y sub 2, now we're substituting in x equals positive h. So, we'll have a times h squared plus b times h plus c. So, again, all I'm doing is just using my parabola formula. I'm substituting in x equals negative h, x equals 0, and then x equals positive h to get y sub 0, y sub 1, and y sub 2. Just plotting points, basically. Okay, so to me this is kind of now the, 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 the observation, <clears throat> sort of the clever observation. If we take y sub 0 plus 4 times y sub 1 plus y sub 2, what are we going to get? Well, we'll have a times h squared minus bh plus c. That's the value for y sub 0. Plus, well, if we take 4 times y sub 1, we'll have 4 times c. And then if we take y sub 2, we've got a h squared plus bh plus c. So what does that give us? Well, we've got a h squared plus a h squared, which is 2 a h squared. The negative bh and the positive bh are going to cancel. We've got 1c plus 4c plus 1c, which is 6c. Okay, so we've got, if we take y sub 0 plus 4 times y sub 1 plus y sub 2, we get this expression. And I hear you saying, well, why do we care? Well, if we compare that to the area underneath the curve, right, we said the area underneath the parabola, generically, was 2 times a times h to the third over 3 plus 2 times c times h. Well, let's see. If we do a little factoring, suppose we factor an h out. Well, then we would be left with... Sorry, Patrick's got a phone call. <laughs> so if we factor the h out, we'll have 2 times a times h squared over 3 plus 2 times c. Well, that's starting to look pretty close, right? These, to me, are starting to look pretty similar. Notice if we factor out the 1 third, if we take h and pull out the 1 third, we can write that as h over 3, then we've got 2 times a times h squared plus, well, 
hey, 6 times c. Okay, so this is kind of the, the key observation. This would be the part to me that wouldn't be, you know, so immediately obvious. Everything up till here to me seems relatively straightforward. But now we can express the area underneath the curve, right? So again, this is the area underneath the curve. We can now express that in terms of the points y sub 0, y sub 1, and y sub 2. So what it says is, it says we can write that area as h over 3. And we said 2 times a times h squared plus 6 times c. Well, that's going to be the same thing as y sub 0 plus 4 times y sub 1 plus y sub 2. Okay, so that's, that's, the, that's the key part. And again, now to revisit, it doesn't matter if we shift, again, you know, so we shifted it about the, to make it symmetric about the y-axis to make life easy, but the area underneath this first parabola, again, we can still write that as h over 3, plus 4 times y sub 1 plus y sub 2. Well, the area underneath the second parabola, that's going to be h over 3. And now we're going to use y sub 2, because that's the first point that it goes through. We'll have 4 times y sub 3 plus y sub 4. And, okay, so I only went out to x sub 6. Let's generically imagine that this is our very last point, x sub n. Well, this would be x sub n minus 1, and this would be x sub n minus 2. Okay, so you would keep adding up, you know, you'd have your third parabola, your fourth parabola, your fifth parabola, however many you have. Eventually, the very last parabola... Generically, okay, that's going to be h over 3... Well, now you're using the point, you're using the x-coordinate, x sub n minus 2. That corresponds to y sub n minus 2. You would have plus 4 times y sub n minus 1. Again, you're using the second to last uh, y value. And then you would have simply y sub n. You would use the very last y-coordinate. Well, now if you start adding these up, let's see, what's going to happen? So notice all of these have, have an h over 3 in there, right? So we can just factor that h over 3 out. Well, we've got y sub 0. That's the only place y sub 0 is going to get used. Notice the odd, you know, the odd y values, y sub 1, y sub 3, y sub 5, etc. Those only get used in uh, a single parabola. So we would have y sub 0 plus 4 times y sub 1. But notice now y sub 2 gets used twice. It gets used as the tail end of a parabola, and it gets used as the beginning of a parabola. So that point gets used twice. And again, you've got 4 times y sub 3. Again, y sub 4 would be the tail end of a parabola. It would be the last point the parabola goes through, and it would be the first point the new parabola goes through. So again, that gets used twice. So this is where you're getting this alternating 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, etc., and now you would just keep doing this until you get to the very last uh, parabola. So then you would have you would have 2 times y sub n minus 2, because again, it's the first point of the last parabola it would have gotten used previously, plus 4 times y sub n minus 1, and then y sub n. And again, we said that h, again, was the same thing as delta x. y sub 0, well, we can replace that. We can write that generically as f of x sub 0 plus 4 times f of x sub 1 plus 2 times f of x sub 2, etc., etc. And then eventually we're going to get down to 2 times f of x sub n, whoops, f of x sub n minus 2 plus 4 times x sub n minus 1 plus... I'm saying it, but not writing it. Let me do this one more time. So we would have delta x over 3, f of x sub 0, plus 4 times f of x sub 1. I'm thinking about who, who my phone call was from. 
plus 2 times f of x sub 2 dot 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 so we would have 2 times f of x sub n minus 2 plus 4 times f of x sub n minus 1 last but not least f of x sub n and again that's now our approximation okay so alright I hope that sheds a little light on 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 where Simpson's uh, Simpson's rule, the, the derivation, where it comes from. So, again, if you're interested in these derivations, uh, I would always encourage you to try to come up with it yourself. You know, a lot of these are not trivial. This one, to me, you know, maybe not the end of the world. A couple, certainly a couple clever observations. Um, you know, this fact of shifting things to make life a little easier. Okay, that to me is pretty smart. Uh, you know, recognizing how those two formulas end up where they go. How the area underneath the curve can be related to the y sub 0, 4 times y sub 1 plus y sub 2. That's also a little clever. But then after that, it's just you're just calculating the area underneath a parabola generically to come up with that, that very first formula we did. Again, to figure out y sub 0, y sub 1, and y sub 2, you're just plugging and chugging. Um, so not the end of the world, but again, definitely some, you know, some, some some clever observations had to be made. So, all right, I hope this makes some sense and answers some questions about where good old Simpson's rule comes from.